All right, welcome back to the uh, Fantasy Six Pack DFS podcast. We're all the way up to uh, week twelve, Pat. What do you, can you believe it's week twelve? Yeah, this season is just flying by, man. Man, I tell you, buddy. Um, so I'm Dave Eddy uh, here with my boy Toy. Uh, as you already heard, Patrick Mikowski. Um, what do you think? We just uh, kind of get into taking a, a look back at week eleven, Pat. Yeah, let's recap it. All right, so I'll start my core plays. Um, they panned out pretty well. Uh, Josh Jacobs uh, went without a touchdown, so 17.4 points is what you got from him. So not amazing, but but still pretty solid. Uh, DJ Moore kind of you know did his usual uh, 17.5 points there. Brian Hill kind of butt fucked me a little bit. Um, he, he didn't really do a whole lot, unfortunately. But the good news is just about everyone was in on Brian Hill, so they suck for him as well. Uh, what about your core plays, Pat? Yeah, Mike Thomas, once again, did what Mike Thomas does. Uh, just over 28 points. Uh, and Zeke was my other guy. Uh, you know, not a whole lot of yards, but did find the end zone a couple times. A little over 20 points out of him there, too. Um, so, I know you were fading um, on Jacobs. I don't know. I guess it's a little bit of a wash. Um you know, I mean, he, he did well, but you know, he didn't he yeah, didn't he didn't kill. Respect, no, respectable for him. Uh, he wasn't the beast that you said he was going to be. No, but I did say it was going to depend on how many times he got in the end zone. So you throw yeah, you throw a touchdown on there, and all of a sudden, you know, he's at twenty three points, and you know, he had a great day. God forbid you give him two touchdowns. Yeah, amen to that. Yeah, so I mean, it is what it is. It's kind of the same thing a little bit with Zeke, only. The other way around where, you know, like you say, he didn't do very much yardage, but he did get in the end zone. So, you know, he's a guy that I wasn't touching really, um, which is odd because pretty much an elite running back against the Lions, you, you think I would feast on that, but I just wasn't feeling it. So, um, but, you know, he put up 20, like you said. Um, let's see. For me, I was fading Amari Cooper, which was spot on because he didn't do dick. Um, he did get hurt a little bit, so that definitely played a role into it. You can't predict injuries, but... I will take the win, and then yeah, I was, yeah. go ahead. Michael Michael Gallup absolutely torched the Lions. Uh, he was all over the field. Yeah, now I can't. I gotta go back and take a look. I I played Gallup like like crazy. Um, did I have him on our notes here? I did. I had Michael Gallup as my top pivot from last yeah. week. So I I didn't put it in the notes because I couldn't remember if uh, I was in on him. Um, on Wednesday night yet or not. Uh, I figured I was, but uh, I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, that was probably the biggest win that I had of the whole week personally. But um, I also was fading Waller. He put up 12.5 points, so um, no big deal, but better than I expected. I think maybe other than the Gallup pick, um, I think your contrarian play of the week was a pretty was a pretty big win. You want to talk about that for a second? Yeah, you know, I was listening to, uh, to you and Joe the other day, and, uh, you know, I can't believe that he got some bad advice from somebody to sit John Brown. I mean, we talked about it for, it seemed like, 10 minutes last week. I said, you got to play this guy. Dave says he'll never put up a 40-point game, and he was just shy of that this week. Uh, what did he end up with? Freaking nine, nine catches, 137 yards, two touchdowns, 14 targets. Uh, and if you ended up stacking him with Allen somehow, how did you have a good day there? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm not. I'm never big fans of those Bills. Um, they just don't have that upside. And uh, I guess I'll kind of get into it a little bit later with these notes. But um, so my contrarian. Um, I mean, I had two. One of them doesn't count because uh, I had Marlon Mack, who was off to a great day, and then he got hurt. So I mean, seems as though he would have panned out to be be a huge play, but we'll, we'll never know. And then I went with a, we probably should have been more of a dart throw, which was Wentz, um, just because he was going to be so low owned. And I was so dead wrong on every aspect of that, of that, of that game. Crazy, but that's okay. But that's okay, man. Like when you're doing a, a 20 max tournament, I, you can't just, you, you can't just go with 20 like chalky kind of lineups. I, I always like to, what I do is I'll put in like, 18 kind of normal lineups like kind of like what i'm doing across the board and then i'll throw just two fucking weird ones in there and i'll be damned if you know not quite often you'd be surprised at how often those crazy lineups end up being the highest scoring it's 
probably at uh, least one of your one of your weird ones that you threw in there for your dart throw last week happened to be who? Oh uh, well, I did a lot of them. Um, I had I had a huge laundry list of, of dart throws, but um, I mean, I I I said if, if uh, Jordan Howard would be out, that that I'd really like Miles Sanders. Uh, Jordan Howard was out, and I played about eighty percent Miles Sanders. That didn't work for me. He got six point seven points. Uh, I was in on Russell Gage a lot with Hooper being out. Um, he had a touchdown that was called back. So that, I mean, he didn't catch the ball. So it's not like, you know, he got screwed or anything. But um, that touchdown would have made him a great play. Um, but the big home run hitter was, you know, my boy Jeff Driscoll. Um, I'm actually considering inviting him over for Thanksgiving dinner because I'm so proud of him. Um, <laughs> dude, dude put up 27 and a half points. Uh, so he was good for 6x. I ended up having him, God, I, I think I was talking on the pod about 15 to 20% exposure, and I think by the time it was all said and done, he was probably closer to about 40%. Um, so thank God for, for Jeff Driscoll. Who, who would have who thought that was possible? Yeah, man, really um, nice play on your part. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably do a little bit of him this week too, um, but we'll get into that. So week 12's got a really weird slate. Um I mean, there, there's just a bunch of shit games. The the only three that I think are are fairly decent this week: uh, Tampa versus Atlanta, Carolina versus New Orleans, uh, Seattle versus Philly. And I would have thrown New England and Dallas in there, but report right now is there's pretty much a hundred percent chance that that weather is just going to be absolutely terrible. So that's probably going to at least limit, if not take away, the passing game. So it may turn into a very low scoring kind of, you know, game like they had uh, San Francisco, San Francisco. And who was that? San Francisco, Washington. Yeah. I think yeah. So cool. we might be looking at another one of those. So this makes for a really tough week. Um, when I was going through looking at things, because you do have some guys that are, that are priced up just like they were last week. And the value plays at least as of, you know, us recording this on Thursday night right here is the start of Thursday night football's kicking off. Um, not a whole lot of great value plays. So it's going to be a really interesting week. I think this is going to be a week where I probably have a lot more um, player pool depth that, than I'm used to. Um, so I don't know. We'll, we'll kind of see how it shakes out um, as the week goes on. But um, why don't you go ahead and, and start knocking off some of your core plays that you have for this week, Pat? All right, so, you know, I really like Derrick Henry this week at 6900 bucks going against a Jacksonville Jaguars run defense that over the last couple weeks has absolutely been torched for over seven yards of carry, 400 yards on the ground, three scores. Um, this is just another game where – you know, I've heard from so many people that, and it's right, it really doesn't matter if Tennessee's up or if they're down. They continue to turn around and hand this guy the ball. Um, he's going to get 20 touches. He's going to get a sneaky catch or two out of the background for, you know, backfield for 10, 20 yards. Uh, I'm expecting a big day out of Derrick Henry. Um, and then I really like Allen Robinson, too, at 6500 bucks uh, against the absolutely dreadful New York Giants. Uh, secondary, giving up almost 200 yards a game to receivers, almost 14 and a half yards a catch, touchdown and a half a game. Uh, A-Rob's going to get his target share. It's going to be north of 10, and he could really be in for a solid day as long as Bitch Trubisky can get him the ball. Yeah, you, you nailed exactly, man. Like, I mean, I, I think part of the fun in, in doing this, um, you know, with, with you, someone who I've known forever, um, is, you know, we like to do a little devil's advocate, you know, and, you know, kind of, you know, we're more likely to give each other a hard time than to give each other, you know, props. Yeah, it's just it's just because we're fucking immature men. At, yes. least, at least I am. I, I'm, I'm more than happy to admit that. Um, Derek Henry, I, I kind of don't know how I missed that one. Um as far as the notes are concerned, I, I think I started to fill out my notes for this prior to you. And um, I don't know why Derrick Henry didn't make my list. So I'm really glad you've got him on there. I think that's that's an absolute great play. I think you can start Derrick Henry in, I mean, tournaments and fucking cash games just about every week. And this is a really good week for him. Allen Robinson, man, 
Ah, oh, like you said, eh, Mitchell Trubisky just makes him such a such a iffy play, man. I mean, sixty five hundred dollars. Ah, it is a good matchup, but I don't know, man. Mitchell Trubisky is is rough. Um, I mean, Allen Robinson for the most part this year has been pretty consistent up. I mean, he's had two of the last three weeks. He's been pretty bad, but other than that, he was as consistent as they come. So I don't know. I don't know if it's a core play, but um, I mean, I got. He'll be an interesting play. Uh, Another sneak, you know, quick little sneaky guy in, in for Chicago too. Taylor Gabriel, uh, fourteen targets last week, uh, averaging a little over eleven fantasy points a game in his last four. Uh, only forty two hundred bucks. Uh, Robinson could end up drawing some double teams. Gabriel might be able to sneak around back there a little bit, get a deep one or two, might pan out. So yeah, I don't. I, I definitely wouldn't list that as a core play, but I definitely think that could be a pivot. Um, you know, if you, you know, instead of playing Robinson, if you want to spend a lot less money and throw Gabriel in there, um, you know, that's not bad. He's had double digit points the last two weeks. Uh, like you said, he had 14 targets last week. So yeah, I could see that one. Um, so I got two pretty chalky, pretty obvious core plays. So, um, probably won't get too much into these guys other than kind of rattle them off a little bit. Uh, I'm going Matt Ryan is a core play. I anticipate he'll be highly owned, probably the highest owned quarterback on that slate. But, I mean, it kind of is what it is facing that, you know, Atlanta defense. Or he's not facing the, if he's facing Atlanta defense, I'd like him even more. Um, <laughs> so, nope, I don't think that's how it works. Um, but he's going to be facing the Tampa defense, which is worse than the Atlanta defense. But um, it is a divisional game, so that always scares you just a little bit. Um, but it's a smash spot, so I think he's going to be very highly owned, even at the second highest quarterback, um, only behind Russell Wilson. And then Alvin Kamara, I think that's another pretty obvious smash play. Um, I mean, facing the absolutely terrible Carolina rush defense, Kamara's going to you know, not only get his on the ground, but he should very well get his in the air as well. I don't know if he's going to have 10 catches like he did last week, um, or even eight the week before that, but... You know, it's not impossible in this matchup, even though it is a divisional matchup again, um, you know, to see him go for a hundred and a touch in, you know, the air and on the ground. I don't, not calling that, but I'm saying it's not, it's not out of the realm of possibility at any, any stretch of the imagination. Um, what about then kind of how I'm, you know, going pretty chalky this week for the core plays, um, just because I kind of think it's such a crappy slate. What is a core play or core plays that, um, or chalk plays that you're going to avoid this week? I am going to stay away from Nick Chubb. Uh, 8,100. I think that's a little high for him. Uh, this is going to be a low scoring game. Miami's been pretty good, sneaky good against running backs uh, on the ground, only giving up one rushing touchdown over the last six weeks. Uh, I, you know, my, my pivot, I'll just go right into my pivot is Kareem Punt this week, uh, 5,600 bucks, man. Um, and, and I'll get a little bit farther into that once we get down there, but, but that's, that's why I'm fading on Chubb. So, yeah, that's pretty slick. Um, when I very first looked at this slate for this week, um, you know, one, one thing that I've always liked to do up until kind of recently, and it's just because each week is a little different, is I, I like to pay up and get good running backs, and I like to have my, you know, variants and stuff um, be more at the wide receiver position. And at first look, I said, well, this is a Kamara and Chubb week. Um, that's going to be pretty easy. And then I was starting to look at receivers. But the more I thought about it, especially after, you know, you, you talking a little bit about you know, Chubb's spot. I, I think I agree. I think I went from kind of being in on Chubb as probably a core play for me for the week to pretty much having the same thoughts you have. I don't know that I'll completely fade him because uh, he is in a pretty smash spot against Miami. But, I mean, Kareem Hunt, while he may not necessarily take, you know, a ton of carries from him, um, he's been such an impact in that passing game that even that alone impacts, you know, the number of targets he gets. So, so. That's something that if we'd have talked about this on like Tuesday, I probably would have made fun of you and called you all sorts of funky names. But the more I think about it, I think that's I think you're right on, man. Yeah, I like I said for for Kareem, 
it's going to be a low scoring game. He's he's at 11, 12 touches the last two games he's been back. Uh, and even though that defense is a little stingy against the run, they're pretty susceptible to pass catching and running backs just under nine yards a catch. Uh, the game script is going to kind of favor Kareem a little bit more, I think. Probably 15 touches. And for a 2,500 discount, uh, you know, I'm going to be rolling on down the center, Chuck. Yeah, and I don't know if you can consider Hunt a, a pass-catching running back with the way they've been utilizing him. He's, he's been more of a receiver, but, um, I mean, still to your point, you know, uh, if you can play somebody at the running back spot, which is a little bit weird this week, um, you know, the, 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 the catches that he's going to get, you know, in PPR format like that is, is going to be very valuable. And then, you know, heaven forbid he breaks off a 50-yard run, you know, you're, you're golden, so... Um, so yeah, I'm on board with you, man. Mine are a little bit goofier. I think, um, I think that the most surprising thing that I saw scrolling through everything this week is Josh Allen is the fourth highest quarterback against the Denver defense. I, I, I just do not get it. And I don't even dislike Josh Allen. I know that I, I talk DFS wise about how I pretty much, pretty much don't want to touch him for the most part just because I, I think his ceiling is, is pretty well capped. And one thing that I do like DFS-wise is quarterbacks that run. So it's kind of weird that I am never really too in on Josh Allen. Um, I, I just I just don't see him being the fourth highest priced quarterback against Denver this week. I, I think anyone that plays him kind of needs to get their head checked, man. Um, yeah, I totally, totally agree with you. That Denver pass D... It is in the top 10 for just about every statistical passing category in his quarterbacks. Yeah, I just and, don't get it, man. I just don't get the price this week. And that's all it is. It, uh, I guess I don't know well, what price he'd have to be for me to own him, but it's sure as hell not 6400 $300 more I can get Matt Ryan against Tampa. Like, get the fuck out of here. Oh, $200 yeah. more for yeah. sure, whatever. I mean, it's just it's just a weird price, I think. Um my yep. my top pivot of the week is actually a surprise to me. Um, but as I as I'm just looking through things, um, the, it's Baker Mayfield, okay. And it's for me a pivot from why I was gonna play Chubb, and that's just because I mean say what you want. I think the Miami defense is fucking terrible. Um, when I did this, I, I did think that Njoku would be back. It, it now looks like he's not going to be back. Um, but, you know, like we talked about, Kareem Hunt making a big impact in the passing game. I, I think Baker is kind of poised here to, to take advantage of a pretty juicy matchup against the Dolphins. Now, even off the top of my head, I was thinking that Baker's had an absolutely atrocious season. And in real life, sure, he has. But he has been pretty decent as of late. I mean... His last three weeks, he's faced Denver, Buffalo, and Pittsburgh. So we're talking like three of the top, what, five, eight defenses in, in the league. And he's been putting up at least 17 points a week. And then now he gets a pretty smash spot against Miami. Um, you know, my concern is just that Cleveland gets ahead and, you know, they can pound the ball with Chubb and, you know, Hunt. But um, if that game can be competitive in some fashion... I think that Baker makes for a really sneaky um, pivot play this week. So I, I don't know, man. We'll, we'll see how much Baker I'm going to own as the week goes on. But um, I kind of think it's a little on the sneaky side. Yeah, so. I actually kind of like that, Dave. It's, you know, it kind of goes uh, – Cleveland's defense is, is missing two guys up front that wreak absolute havoc against quarterbacks. Especially with a and, helmet in their hand. Yeah, and uh, – uh, Fitzmagic is going to be able to have a little bit extra time throwing the ball around, so it might get to a point where it's kind of a shootout between him and Baker, and Baker's got some pretty solid weapons, dude. I'm going to so, tell you what, Patrick. Um, I don't know if it's just the holiday season or what's going on, but all this agreeing shit's kind of <laughs> kind of getting out of hand. I don't like it. I yeah. I don't like the, what's going on here. That this either means that we're going to be in for a huge week. Or we're going to be screwed because all of this agreeing has got to stop. So I'll tell you what. Let's get to your contrarian play of the week so that we can kind of flip the script back to normal, okay? All right, I got you. All right, so as Dave said, this is this is one that we do not agree on. Uh, but 
my contrarian play this week is going to be Dak Prescott for six grand up against that totally legit Patriots defense. Uh, you know, Dak has only been sacked 12 times this year. The Cowboys run game is going to be obsolete for the most part against that Patriots rush defense. Um, and I think Dak's going to have to sling the ball around a bunch. I think he's going to have to put it up 40 times, uh, you know, to keep up with TB12. Uh, Dave uh, brought up to me earlier, there could potentially be some crappy weather. Not potentially. Um, there's going to be crappy you know, weather. It, all right. Well, if there is, then maybe I'll end up changing my mind. But but I'm pretty set. Dak Prescott has been one of the more impressive quarterbacks and consistent quarterbacks this year. And I think that uh, he's going to figure out a way to get it done against New England for a couple of scores, you know, 300 yards or so. Pat, let me uh, ask I like that. Let me ask you this, Pat. DFS-wise, what's the number one most important thing that you look at when you're looking at who to start in any given week? Uh, based on what? Position? Here, I'll just give you this. matchup? I'll, I'll or... just, yeah, there you go. Matchups. Ma- matchup is the number one most important thing, in my opinion. Okay? Dak Prescott is literally facing the absolute best pass defense with the absolute best best cornerback in football it if anything i don't think many people would argue that they're more vulnerable to the run game so if anything just assume good weather if anything i would say zeke this would be more of a zeke week um because they are we they are way softer against the run then you add in the weather that's probably going to make it next to impossible to throw the ball and i just i can't see playing Dak, man i, I can play baker for a hundred dollars less I just, I mean, listen, here's what I will say. I will say this for you. This is our contrarian play of the week. Do I, do I think that anyone that has a brain is going to play Dak? I do not. Well, is you that, played Carson Wentz last week against the same defense. So we'll call I did. It, we'll call I did. I did. And I played him in good, I played him in good weather and I played a very, very small percentage. I played him like one lineup out of my 20. So. Yeah, and I like Dak in bad weather better yeah. than I like Wentz in 80 degrees and sunny. Yeah, so. I, I think that's going to turn out to be a bad one. But, I mean, I will say this for you, bud. That is a contrarian play for sure. That That's exactly what this spot is for, is a guy that you like at least a little bit. You don't have to like him a lot. I didn't like Wentz a lot, but yeah. I liked him as a contrarian play. So, um, it's just, man, you, if it wasn't for that weather, I would be on board. But with that weather, I think you're just pissing away. You're pissing away that entire lineup by, by playing him. But we'll, we'll see what happens, man. Because the guy that is my contrarian play is a much worse quarterback. Um, <laughs> just happens to be in a much better matchup. So I'm going with my new whole boy, my best friend. Um, waiting for him to accept my friend request on Facebook. Um, oh Jeff Driscoll, again. <laughs> Listen, man. Laugh all you want to, but you saw him live and in person. Um, I did, and he la- was last he week. was impressive. I'm telling you. I don't know if impressive was the word, but he was efficient, uh, at least for DFS purposes, man. So his price is up a little bit. I think he was forty six, maybe forty nine hundred last week. He's up to fifty five now. Yep. Which is still a great value. Um, all you need is twenty two points from him to get to our four X. Um, probably not going to tremendously struggle to get to that point um, against a much, much better defense last week. Um, He put up 27. And a lot of that has to do, like I said earlier, um, I like running quarterbacks, which is weird then that I don't really care for Josh Allen and most weeks. And here I am promoting Jeff Driscoll. Um, I mean, it it does have a lot to do with the fact that, you know, he's $1,900 cheaper um, against a much weaker defense. But I think I'm going to have a nice chunk of Jeff Driscoll again this week. He made me some money last week. Like I said, I we're basically best friends at this point. Um, so, you know, uh, Jeff Driscoll, again, until he proves me wrong or until he, you know, eats a cherry pie that, you know, I had set aside for later. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. Um, so... One of the more difficult ones, obviously, uh, next to the contrarian is just your dart throw of the week. So this is a week where you probably are going to need a pretty decent dart throw that, that you believe in. 
um, just because it's there's so many shitty matchups. Um, there's not a whole lot of great you know roster building type players this week. So, um, what do you got for dart throws that you're hoping will you know make a big difference for you? Well, the first two weeks I've been two for two. I had uh, I had Kareem Punt the first week he was back, and then I had Kendrick Bourne, a uh, wide receiver for the 49ers last week that panned out. Yes, uh, Bourne, Bourne was very nice. Um, I, why, we're, why we're giving each other props and sitting here jerking each other off all the time. <laughs> um, Debo Samuel also um, had a very nice week, much to, much to my chagrin, as I gave you a lot of shit for that. So let me give you props right now. Um, for Debo and for Bourne. I appreciate that, David. That's awfully kind of you. you no, know, tis the season, my friend. <laughs> so, I, uh, you know, those, both those guys were my two dart throws have been three grand. You're going to have to spend a little bit more than that this week. Um, and I'm going with, I've got two guys. They're in the same backfield. The, and the worst I, backfield in the league, mind you. Yeah, you absolutely hate this. But uh, they're playing the Redskins, man. And Bo Scarborough at 4200 bucks. Listen, this guy was putting on his damn jersey as he was on the bus on his way to Ford Field last Sunday. Walks down a tunnel. He's got a starting gig. The dude runs hard, man. He does. I'll give uh, you that. I will give you that. He is a – he. that dude's got effort. He does. And the Skins give up a little over four yards of carry, about 110 yards a game on the ground. Uh, just under a touchdown to opposing running backs. It's a pretty good matchup for the Lion running backs. Uh, there, there is no such thing. Be, there is. There's no I such thing as a good ahead. matchup. <laughs> uh, he's going to see 15 to 20 carries. No, um, no, he's not. Shut up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If he I sees, think so. You want to make a bet on if he gets 20 carries? I said 15 to 20. Okay, so you, last week. so you want to say 15 carries in since now you're backing sure. down from 20? Well, I said 15 to 20. That's what I said. I would bet on 20. I won't bet on 15. I'll bet you on 17. Okay, what's the bet? You tell me. You're the one that wanted it. Well, we would have had to plan this out, Patrick. I don't, I don't I know. know. Okay, we'll talk about it after. <laughs> okay, but we will make a bet. Right. We will make a bet offline at we'll, – we'll, we'll, we'll have to go – 17 and a half. That way we can't have a, a, a stupid tie. Okay. All right. Uh, so the other guy, J.D. McKissick, uh, he's going to be their third down guy. Washington struggles against pass catching running backs as well. Almost eight and a half yards to catch out of the backfield. I think he's going to have a pretty solid day too. I think the Lions are going to surprise some people uh, running the ball. And, uh Yeah. That's it. Listen, the, he, here's the only way that the Lions running game ever surprises me, okay? And that's the fact that they even attempt to, okay? <laughs> and, I, and I will say this much. I, I honestly, as far as, like, real-life football is concerned, I actually really like Bo Scarborough. I'm not kidding. Um, I wouldn't touch him in fantasy. Um, I mean, you, you could literally put McCaffrey in that Lions backfield, and I would still question... Whether or not I want I want to touch him, man. And then you can't have it both ways, Pat. You can't say that the Lions are going to be ahead and are going to give Bo Scarborough 87 touches this week, <laughs> and then yeah. also turn around and say, "Oh, by the way, I like McKissick because he catches the ball out of the backfield a lot." They're either going to run it unsuccessfully or they're going to throw it relatively successfully because, of course, my boy Driscoll's back there. But you got I, you're gonna have to pick one or the other. Do you like Scarborough or do you like McKissick? You can't have it both when there's two different game scripts you're, you're promoting. Yeah, but I think that they're both minimum three X guys. Oh, I think you're they crazy. both. I think they McKissick both maybe score. maybe McKissick. I, no way, no way. Bo Scarborough is gonna get seventeen points. My dart throw, Dave. I'm the one oh, throwing it. I know. I I hate the Lions so fucking much. <laughs> All right, well, let me give you my terrible dart throws in because mine aren't any damn better than yours, buddy. Um, <laughs> mine are pretty bad. Um, I went with this last week, and I'm going to go with it again. Um, I'm going to say Russell Gage. He's 3,900 now instead of 3,300, so that's not cool. Um, like I said, if he didn't drop that touchdown last week, he would have been in good shape. I'm probably not going to end up playing him simply because um, if Hooper comes back, which we don't know if he will or not yet, 
Um, but if Hooper comes back, he's not playable in my opinion. Um, even at 3,900 in that offense against Tampa Bay, I, I still wouldn't. Um, and now you're going, maybe we're just too big a Lions fans because you're going with two Lions players. I'm actually going with two Redskins players, which breaks my heart. Um, I, I could potentially see somebody playing Dwayne Haskins at 4,900. Um, not because Dwayne Haskins is a great quarterback, but he's facing the Lions defense. Um, so that's always worth a look at this point. Um, I mean, I typically do not advise getting risky at quarterback, uh, as you know, we've, we've talked a little bit about, and then here I am playing Driscoll all the fucking time. Um, but dude's not going to see any pressure because the Lions can't get to a quarterback. And so he's going to look a lot, unfortunately, like he did, you know, against Michigan last year, just dumping the ball off and, um, you know, get, getting, getting plays down the field. Cause he's not going to face any pressure. And as a rookie quarterback, kind of the one thing that you typically do against them is pressure them into mistakes. And Lions, you know, they love to rush three. They probably rush two if they could, but I don't know if Patricia's smart enough to draw that one up. So, you know, he's going to have a lot of time to throw the boys. not going to take any sacks. If you want to save a ton of money and, you know, pay up elsewhere, you could do worse than Haskins at 49. Just don't be shocked if, you know, he throws some picks and, you know, that doesn't get you a huge game. And then the last guy, kind of the same boat, is is Gage. Um, I've got Darius Geist down. He's only 4700 bucks. So, you know, I, I see your Scarborough play against the Lions, and I'm kind of going to raise you Geis, um, you know, against against that team. Uh, it's good to see this kid finally get out in the field. Um, you know, he's been injured, not been able to play pretty much most of his career to this point. But any... Anyone that's got a heartbeat that's not in a wheelchair um, that's playing the Lions is worth a look. So, you know, Geis is, is decent. I think that, you know, if AP is playing, that's going to obviously hurt. It looks like AP is going to play. I think Chris Thompson might be back this week as well. So, again, three dart throws that here I give you a, a hard time about yours, and I don't really like mine that much better. So, um, it's just a weird week, man, and unfortunately you probably need to have – at least one of these guys that you're comfortable with that you can put into lineups each week. Um, so I don't know. I think these dart throws are going to become a little more apparent to us when we get to Saturday night, Sunday morning, you know, before kick. You'll see.